Which run are you looking forward to seeing at ESA Summer 21? Well, as a Super Mario Brothers 3 fan, I gotta say seeing Mitch on the ESA stage is something I am highly looking forward to. He just took the world record back again in 100%. So to see that he's going to be bringing those routes and bringing those strats to ESA, I'm just very excited to see. Any favorite memes? I know this is good, like cliched at this point, but get good for some reason still just uh, is hilarious to me. Probably because quite often I'm sucking at video games. You know, when you're speedrunning, most of the time you're failing. Like you try things and it's not succeeding. And quite often Twitch chat will give you the answer. Just get good. I'm like, okay, well, there we go. Now I know what you need to do. Thank you for solving my problems, Twitch chat. I appreciate it. Get good. How large is your speedrunning pile of shame? <laughs> Okay, I have this reputation. So my speedrunning pile of shame is quite large and I don't think it's ever gonna stop and end. But one of the things that I'm very consistent about is at some point I will die to the final boss. It doesn't matter what game it is, where I'm at in speedrunning, there is some point I will die to the end boss and lose a PB, lose a world record, lose a gold split. All of it has happened and will continue to happen, I'm sure, long into the future. On a scale from one to 10, how much do you hate RNG? RNG is an interesting thing, and I think that's one of the reasons that we keep coming back to speedrunning. I don't think the speedrunning would be as interesting if there weren't those RNG elements. And most of the speedrunners at the top of whatever leaderboard they are, the most competitive or the least competitive, will kind of have a similar opinion because it's what keeps the competition interesting. It also is it's what keeps you coming back to gaming is like that there's a chance something different might happen this time. When I'm speedrunning, oh, I hate RNG with a passion. 10, get rid of it. I'm done with it. But as a fan and as a viewer and a person who loves video games, I'm like, let's Let's have as much RNG as we possibly can. It's a bit hypocritical, but I'm, you know, so is speedrunning. So there we go. Enjoy the rest of ESA Summer 21. Welcome back, everyone. This is ESA Summer 21. We are raising money for Save the Children, a wonderful organization dedicated to helping millions of children around the world. You can find links to donate below the stream. Thank you again to Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now I'm going to pass it off to Lap Mackey as they show us Bonk's Adventure. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody, and good morning if you're in Europe. <laughs> Um, good late evening or even early, early morning if you're here, still here in the States. How you doing? My name's Lat Mackey, and we're going to be playing some Bonk's Adventure on the TurboGrafx-16, TurboGrafx-16, and I'm actually playing on an original hardware PC engine. A couple of quick things to get out of the way, just so you understand what's going on in this run before I interview, uh, before I welcome in uh, the commentators and everything like that. Uh, the console itself has turbo switches built in. So a lot of the strats you're gonna see in this game are built around turbo and they're totally valid. You're totally allowed to do that. It's totally legal. It's all great. These are what the games look like on TurboGrafx-16. They're awesome. They're like these little hue cards. This is one of the reasons it's fun if you like collect and stuff like that. It's totally fun and you have a good time. Folks, we're here to raise some money. Hopefully we can raise some money during this if you're if you're willing and able. We're trying to do this for a really great cause. Save the children. Feel free. Join us. And I am excited to announce uh, the commentator is going to be helping out during this run. Junko, how are you doing? Thanks so much for joining. Thank you. Uh, like Lad said, I am uh, Junko. Usually I am behind the scenes on the fundraising team, but I am Lat's emotional support animal at 4 a.m. <laughs> Absolutely right. So why don't we go ahead and get started because we've got about 30 something minutes in front of us. Are we ready on the timer? Are we ready to go? Here we go. In Oh, I got to start the thing. Hang on one second. Got to wait for the title screen to join us here and then we'll get going. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Okay, so Bonk's Adventure was like, it's the first Bonk game that came out on the TurboGrafx-16. And this, the casual game play of this is actually really fun. It's a really fun casual playthrough. Really great sprites, a lot of cool sounds, all that kind of stuff. 
the speed run of it is even more interesting because you're going to be doing a lot of like spinning and things like this where you boost off of spring flowers and things like that. And this happens all over this run. And with a little bit of luck, we'll be getting this a lot. So <laughs> we'll see what happens and see how it goes. Thankfully, Junko here actually has done some work and can hit us with a little bit of lore. What's like the story in the setup for this game, Junko? Um, honestly, the uh, lore for Bonk is not nearly as fleshed out as some of the other Bonk spinoff games like Air Zonk. Um, big thing was you had Hudson Soft trying to find some kind of mascot character that could rival up to Mario and later Sonic and originally they went with uh, Bonk but his original name was uh, PC Boy because I think this game is called like PC Genjin or that something like that in the original Japanese Absolutely. Um, but he's become synonymous as Bonk thanks to the many games and uh spin-off games he became hudsoft's main mascot and unfortunately hudson soft went out of business in 2011 while they were working on an xbox 360 and ps3 uh reboot no! game yeah so now konami owns the rights to bonk so okay. who knows if and when we'll see it <laughs> I'm going to call out a couple things here. So this first thing I do, this is called the Uber skip because Uber Disco discovered this, that you can actually clip into, well, it's not even clipping. You're actually spinning into the ceiling up here and it saves a bit of time. Um, and then just taking that bottom route there. And then you actually clip through that wall to get through. There's like a little gap that you can clip through here. And thanks to Uber Disco, we are able, uh, we are able to do something like that. Uh, Uber Disco is also a speed runner of this game. I'm going to be doing some damage boosting here using my iframes to get through this stuff. These, they're actually called uvulas. These little things that look like uvulas are actually uvula. They're actually, that's the actual name of it. And they do a lot of damage. But if we take a little bit of damage from these smaller dudes, um, we don't lose as much health and hearts going into the final boss here. And just like that, I'm getting real close to the first level boss here. And here's one of like the big characteristics and kind of like defining things of this game. And that is the boss fights, as you're going to see right here. This is Huey, first level boss. Going to try to make some quick work of Huey here. But the boss sprites are just ginormous in this game. And they're one of the things people remember a lot from playing this game. If you were lucky enough and fortunate enough to, have, to play this game as a kid. Um, I was actually did. I had a TurboGrafx-16 growing up. Why did my parents end up buying my brothers and I a TurboGrafx-16? I have no idea, but I am forever thankful for them because I was the one kid within, you know, like a 60 kilometer radius that actually had a TurboGrafx-16 in the house. So um, this would actually, if we have any donations, now's a good time. All right. We have $5 from Cam Popplestone saying shout out to Junko from Cam. <laughs> hey. Thanks, bud. And they put that towards the dark difficulty for Spyro, the Eternal Knight. Ooh. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. But Spyro is a fun speedrun game, so. And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and just mention, we are less than $50 away from $36,000. Ooh. And if anyone is interested, we are two-thirds of the way through the donation incentive to see Majora's Mask SRM. So get those donations in. Please do. Keep them coming. So, folks, same type of thing here. And you'll notice... When I try to spring boost off, sometimes I actually miss. So there's some weird, interesting tech that happens with these spring boosts. And that is that you can only hit them every other frame to get that big boost off of them. Memory Task, the person who has who has done the most recent task of this game, discovered that. And it makes it kind of interesting because sometimes you just flat out miss those spring boosts. And especially if they happen in the first level, uh, depending on where your time is, you usually just reset because, hey, you know, it's really tough to make up some of that time because you could go for like 10 seconds without actually hitting one. And especially being that we keep the turbo engaged as we're doing it, there's somewhat of a luck element to try to get those spring boosts happening on the first and second attempts. Um, you'll notice that I'm, it doesn't, the smiley faces, you'll see them littered throughout the stage. They're they serve, uh, they refill your health at the end of stages. And excuse me, they, there is an optimal amount that uh, memory actually figured out to get. And I don't remember exactly what that number is, but 
it's the optimal amount to refill your health and also not cause any extra time at the end of a stage. So you want you don't want to get too many of them. And here's one of the big things you've already seen it already happen once. A lot of the game is routed around getting these big honking meats. And that is because as you can already notice, you uh, you move a lot faster when you have giant meat. And so Bonk is you know apparently a carnivore and he moves a lot faster when he has full meat. So we we don't we want to get a certain amount of them but not too many of them because you'll notice that there is an animation associated with it. So if you get too many, then you're slowing down because of animations. But the optimal thing is to, you know, to use it to get through places and areas a lot faster. Memory has this great saying about this game that the floor is lava. And so a lot of what we try to do is avoid Oh jeez. Come on. So I'm flipping the turbo switch on and off here. That's why some of those weird actions happen there. And the reason we call the, we say the floor is lava because if things go well, you're in the air spinning quite a bit because you can build up a lot of momentum. Uh oh, this is gonna be bad. Okay, so I'm gonna miss a meat here, which is it's okay. There's some other places to get it. Trying to do any, uh, any, uh, any enemy or, uh, you know, like a Bonk and Za lore that you might have discovered when researching this game? Bonk and Za lore. Well, the one thing I can I can say, I did not believe you, enemy, Z uh, Princess Za, who's another speedrunner of this game. Um, I did not believe you all whenever you said that Bonk, that this was all kind of alien-ish. And <laughs> I insisted, I thought this was just, okay, he's a caveman, that makes sense. So clearly everything must be these anthropomorphic dinosaurs. And then I read up on like Gladys alone, who's a stream favorite. And it's like, oh no, she's a ninja alien from Moonland. Like, okay, <laughs> that, there, there goes my mind. Yeah, you know, like, so the game is like set, you know, in this kind of cavemanish world, but it's actually a four, it's, it's, it's an alien world. And so it's, especially if you're playing this for the first time, that may feel a little bit weird or look a little bit bizarre, but I guess it sort of starts to make sense when you actually realize everyone's from a different planet, which is Moonland. Um, so that'll make a little more sense when you get towards the end of the game. <laughs> The biggest sensical thing I can say that Hudsoft did with this game was choose the meat as the power up. Just because you look at Mario, what does he get to power up? He gets a star. What does Bonk get? Meat. We need meat. We are human. It makes perfect sense. I don't recall eating a star. Yeah, that would be a little bit weird. But there had to be something with invincibility, you know? And it's got to last a limited amount of time because if Mario did it, then... Uh... Basically, every mascot of the 8 and 16 bit generation <laughs> had that as a characteristic. There was an arcade version of this that came out first, and it was two player, 28 levels. Um, you could play, uh, player one was Bonk, player two was a female version of Bonk. And I'm actually curious now, I want to see how many, uh, how well the uh, arcade machines. <coughs> Some of the cabinets have survived on like YouTube and seeing what runs like that look like because it was intended to be a speed game. It said in the instructions that it was intended to get from point A to point B faster than your player two. So and I did play that. I did play the arcade game that this first, you know, the, this game is based off of first. And it almost felt like playing a slot machine. <laughs> like it literally, it, it plays completely different. The stages are very short. It's kind of, it feels like a, a, an arcade game or something that definitely wants you to put more quarters in. <laughs> but it was fun nonetheless. That, Silly. That makes fun. sense why Konami owns the rights to it then. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, there's so there's a couple things happening as you've probably already noticed. There is vertical and horizontal platforming in this. Ah, dang it, I did not mean to get that meat. Um, that's just a random meat dro uh, drop that there's nothing I can do to avoid it. And the only reason that I, I hesitate to say that it's any good is because uh, the it, the animation just slows you down <laughs> at this point because we're about to get a big meat drop here in just a second. So we're coming up on as uh, Junko mentioned it. The boss of this level is known as Gladys, and Gladys is one of the, th if you're going to learn the speed run of this game, Gladys is one of the, 
bosses you definitely got to learn early on uh, because she can kind of wreak havoc and really cost you a ton of time if you're not uh, careful. So we're hoping we're going to get through this here safely. We'll see. A little bit low on health. Should be okay. The nice thing about Gladys is just when you finally learn her patterns and you've got it down and you're feeling comfortable, when you finally get there in a good run, she completely changes everything and all of a sudden you're either in the red or hitting reset. Totally. And a, a lot of the things that you you can't necessarily see on screen happening right now, but it, during this stage a lot, the turbo switches get turned on and off quite a bit. Ah, uh, didn't miss the first. That's fine. This will be okay. We still get another... There we go. Okay, we're getting a favorable pattern here. Didn't get the fastest pattern, unfortunately, but we do get the one of the easier ones. So, but throughout the run, you know, claw gripping, turning off turbo, all that kind of fun stuff. That's happening all the time. And the issue here is, you know, these controllers, this one's over 30 years old. So <laughs> try to take it easy on it as much as I can. But, you know, old controllers and speed running don't necessarily always jive well together. So Try to take it easy. I, I have gone through more controllers than I'd like to admit, but this is still the first controller that actually came with this console. So I was fortunate enough to find a PC engine in uh, in, in box. Uh, not new, but in box at least. A few years ago when I started speedrunning for uh, on TurboGrafx-16. That was a really good Gladys. Yeah, that, that one actually way better than any practice uh, went. So that's a plus. All right, so, so there, that just go ahead, no, go and say, so that just means uh, Punchy Pedro is going to just wreck right. your day. <laughs> so one of the things I'm going to try doing here is juggling with these red dudes who have a name that I can't quite remember. Um, I, oh, man, what are the name of these enemies? I don't even remember what they're called. But you can actually build up momentum. Oh, man, I got another unlucky meat drop. Uh, you can build up momentum by juggling your uh, hits on enemies. So... You may not notice it, but my speed is increasing ever so slightly. Oh, we need that. Come on, game. Oh, come on. Oh, did that thing just really go away? Okay, well, we're going to do backup strat here. Typically, I would get a big meat there, but just in practice, I was using this spring boost, and it works really well if I get lucky. There we go. Oh, missed it by just a hair. But you can see how like uh, powerful some of those spring boosts can be if you get them in the right spot. And that happens you know, for, sometimes. Oh, go ahead, Sean. I, I was going to say, for as many runs of this that I've watched of yours and of Zaz, uh, I wonder if anybody goes and digs through like some of the older game files uh, of the old Persona games, because if you caught that at the beginning, the one of the other devs for this game was Atlas. This is one of their earlier games. So it always made me wonder if there's any kind of Easter eggs in Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, etc. for Bonk that they can get away with without Konami like suing them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, we were talking about that in my stream right before uh, we joined the uh, the the marathon here because uh, it's kind of interesting that, you know, this is Atlas's early work. I mean, <laughs> who would have thought that Persona would have, you know, be a future game for this company after seeing this? Now they don't necessarily make Punishing games like Bonk can be. It's definitely a punishing platformer. Uh, but they just make very, very, very long games. Oh, yes. You need at least, what's the Persona 5? Around 100 hours at this point? <laughs> Something like that. The speedrun alone took an entire day at the start of ESA. Oh, man. Well, great way to start off. something. I think one thing that is pretty obvious at this. Oh, no, that's not good. Ah, uh, we're not going to be able to get a... We'll, we'll be, we're going to get through this boss fast, but we're going to miss the super fast kill, which is okay. But uh, one of the things I love about the Bonk games is, especially for this era, this kind of falls in the 8 and 16-bit generation, is the uh, is the music. Oh, man, that was a total mistake. Okay, well, we're going to do all three cycles of this guy. <laughs> Why not? But, uh, you know, Persona has some of the best music, you know, I've ever heard in a video game. And I think you could at least, at the very... Uh, you could tell that... They knew how to put together a soundtrack. Mm hmm Absolutely. Uh, and even, like, I've been going back 
since the Vita marketplace is probably going to shut down sooner than later, <laughs> picking up the old uh, Persona PSP uh, remasters and going through and actually playing them. Uh, the music, even back in the early 2000s, late 90s, and they're just banger after banger. This is actually a great time for some if a donation, if you've got one. Well, I was hoping I'd just let everyone know what we are raising money for. Please. That is Save the Children, who was the first global organization devoted solely to serving children's needs and securing their rights. They are often the first or only child-focused organization working in the hardest-to-reach places where it's toughest to be a child. As a result, Save the Children's teams have been proactive in preparedness for pandemic threats. Yeah, folks, it's a good cause. I'm really happy that I get to help out and join such an important cause. If you are able to, f please, some great donation incentives there. Got a bit unlucky where the meat bounced back. So this stage actually doesn't have any checkpoints. You're probably going to notice that right away. That uh, It's just one long level. And I'm first of all, I'm not quite sure how they do that. It's kind of interesting that they are able to do that. Oh, that's a good drop. Okay. Um, these pterodactyls or whatever they're called are the worst there's a couple enemies that are i just despise in this game and this is one of them these things do one full health of damage and you know we are going to get a heart piece here in just a second but <sighs> not get up fast enough that's fine but are you trying to tell me the birds are jerks birds are jerks and that's i feel like that's another defining characteristic of so many games of the 8 and 16 bit era <laughs> where it's just like if there's not a whole birds you're <laughs> Apparently you're gay. You don't have a real game. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to be getting a uh, an extra heart piece, and also trying to farm for a little meat because if we get uh, a meat drop, which is somewhat luck based at this point, uh, it'll help us get through the uh, the boss faster. That's unfortunate because of my health situation, but we'll see what happens. Oh, I missed it. So we're, well, I'm not farming any of these. Okay, we're just going, folks. At this point, I guess we're not doing anything. Survive at all costs. Yeah, apparently we're just going to keep going. I'm sure I'm going to take a hit here at some point. Oh, wow, we actually got lucky. I am going to take a health. So this is Punchy Pedro, a another fan favorite, <laughs> if you could say that. Just because he's rude. Yeah, exactly. Looks like he, he should have been in uh, you know Mike Tyson's punch out, but ended up in a bonk game. So oh, no. I, do, I, I do have a question for you, see if you can uh, it sort of shine some light for Please. everybody in the chat. Just because I personally haven't seen it, but I've only heard the horror stories. NES bonk. Oh my gosh. So uh, there is a there is a version of this. This game was actually ported to a bunch of different consoles. Uh, not just the NES, but uh, Amiga. If Dog Developers in chat, there's some others too that he could mention. And the NES version, first of all, if you collect for the Nintendo, it's a very expensive game. I think it came out later on in the life cycle of the game, of the console. But secondly, it just sucks. Just don't play it. Don't even bother. Not worth it. I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to save you a few hours and a headache by just, you know, you could pass that one up if you want. And this is talking from, this is coming from somebody who loves the Bonk games way more than any human should actually love the Bonk games. But that one, you could totally skip. It doesn't have the turbo, but it still has things that you need to do that where you spin and stuff like that. And mashing the, the B button, not nearly as fun as holding down a turbo B button. Let me just tell you. Okay, we're moving on to round five here. And one of the characteristics of almost every Bonk game that ever came out is that the last stage is is like half the game. And that's the same thing that happens in this game as well. So this is technically the last stage of the game, but it actually takes on quite a bit <laughs> of the uh, the actual speedrun itself and the casual playthrough. And what we're going to try and do is platform through this as fast as we can. Wow, that was actually a little bit interesting way. I don't normally take that way, but that was good. And we're going to be skipping some huge chunks uh, thanks to some skips that existed in the game and where some of these were actually, I would I don't know if they were found or discovered, but they were part of the original tasks of the game. So we've known them for a little bit. Some of our older strats. Interestingly enough, 
The very first submitted run on speedrun.com of this game was about seven years ago by DK28, um, who, you know, a speedrunner from a while ago, who uh, I don't think he's been speedrunning anytime soon, but super thankful for all the uh, things he did because he actually had a, a fair amount of these strats in his runs, you know, seven years ago. And there's been a bunch of great competitions and rivalries going on in the scene currently. Uh, the world record holder right now is Great John, but before Great John took it back, uh, we had Princess Za, who's actual, that's her actual screen name is, is Za. And that's actually one of the characters in this game. So we've had some really great world records transferring back and forth between Za and Great John and still doing it to this day. They're both still grinding the game, so it's been fun to watch. Uh, yeah, it's been is, good. Go ahead, John. I was going to say, it's been fun watching the TG16 community as a whole grow in the last couple of years. We've been having a lot of fun. What just happened there was the same thing as the Uber skip from like the first level, where you just hold down spin and you can jump on a roof. And that one's been known for a while, so it's kind of cool when Uber put that idea behind finding that skip in the first level. Okay, this room's kind of interesting. These um, statues do a lot of damage to you, so you want to hit them in the right spot, but you want to kind of climb up a little bit. They can give you a little bit of, there we go, some elevation. That was a good one. And notice my momentum increased a little bit. Now, I want to take that all the way to the end here, but if you hit these things in the wrong spot, they'll do a full heart of damage, so you can easily lose your life here. Oh, that was a good one. And I'm going to skip that. Oh, that was a good uh, sprinkler. So the luck in this game, interestingly enough, a lot of the enemies and things like that spawn in the exact same place. As far as like the randomness goes, there's not a ton in this game, but there is a little bit of randomness when it comes to your spin. And that's why it can get a little interesting, especially if you're just holding, you know, holding down the turbo and hoping something happens. So this is what I find. I find this room to be one of the more challenging levels in the stage. And you'll see why these, those little skeleton guys, these little dudes, they take uh, three hits to, uh, to actually beat so you don't really end up defeating any of them you just want to skip them but it's a little bit easier to flip the turbo switch off so you know once again tur turning the turbo back on and off so what i'm getting from what you were just saying about like rng and consistency and stuff uh the only thing that's not consistent in a bonk game is bonk himself exact that's exactly it there is a bit of randomness in some of the boss fights and some other things, but not a ton. Oh, geez, that's not good. Oh, no. Whew. Oh, man, that was a lucky heart drop. I'm totally taking that. Cool. That's exactly it, Sean. Okay, so we're going to do some more spring boosting here, and it's really challenging in this part of the game because you see those sprinklers. We have to avoid them at the same time while we're avoiding some other things. So, oh, and I got the good... Oh, I got the... I got the... See... Bonk randomness there actually went in my favor, so don't always get that. I am uh, gonna take a some broken help clock. Here. Is... Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of a hit here, and then there's thankfully some health here. We can. You have there's not a ton of slowdown in this game. There was something the TurboGrafx-16 the the developers were able to really take advantage of everything the uh, the hardware had to offer and. When you play a lot, you know, the console is kind of known for like shmups and things like that, shoot em ups, things like that. Um, you, you rarely, you don't see a ton of slowdown and lag in these games. And I, I always feel like that's because they, they were able to harness like the full power of the console, even though it's not a full, you know, traditional 16 bit console. I've not had a chance to play myself. Um, the TG16 Mini the that came out last year. Yeah. Um, is how close is it to the original PC engine in terms of like, if you wanted to run bonk on there, say your controller broke, heaven forbid, yeah. what, uh, how, what kind of, uh, changes would you have to make to be able to run that in terms of like latency or anything like lag or anything like that? That is a great question. And I was really surprised. First of all, it's really fun. The mini, they did a really good job with it. Uh, that's not good. That was unfortunate. <laughs> By the way, just I'm going to answer your question in just a second here. But this stage, this part, this room is the bane of all speedrunners. We have all lost runs to this room. The there's th once again, there's not a ton of RNG in this game, but sometimes you have to be really precise with your inputs and your jumps because well. 
uh, the um, what's it called? The the hitboxes of enemies is really you probably hear this from all speedrunners, but the hitboxes here are just really challenging and and force you into some really tight jumps. But to ba get back to the original question, yes, there the the, the input lag and all those kind of things compared to the actual console is inconsistent for like a game like this bonk's adventure is pretty much okay it seems fairly similar bonk's revenge i found to be really different on the count the lag was just i don't know if they changed the input lag or something about that but then like on castlevania rondo of blood it feels exactly like it does on a console so i'm not 100 sure why it's that way but needless to say don't let that hold you back it's if you have access to a mini and you want to get one uh i i wholeheartedly endorse it i've enjoyed every game i've played on it and i played a few of them on there now so uh if while I... you're finishing up this hallway i think that might be a good uh time for some last minute donations please absolutely we have a five dollar donation from suspect is hatless saying it's showtime bonk <laughs> And they put Thank you so that, much for the donation. They put that towards the Sega Bass Fishing bonus game. Oh my god. Which, by the way, w goal of that is $1,500. We are currently at $167.66. So if you want to see some bonus Sega Bass Fishing after Mario Party 7, get those donations in. It's going towards a great cause. Okay, when this run is over, that's totally what I'm donating towards. If you haven't seen Sega Bass Fishing, you haven't seen Bass Fishing the way it was intended. Uh, folks, look away really quick. There is some flashing lights. If you're sensitive to flashing lights, please look away for just a moment. And I'll let you know when you can come back. Okay, you should be good. Welcome back. There's going to be a couple more times where we have uh, some flashing lights issues, and I'll try to get there a little bit quicker than that one. Oh, geez. Go in there. But we are heading towards a good old-fashioned boss rush. You know, every good uh, platformer has to have a boss rush. Absolutely. It's interesting in this game that they, oh geez, they they chose to go with just a straight boss rush. In other game, in Bonk's Revenge, the next uh, game, they you actually had a level for each boss, similar to like, well, actually not similar. That's not true. Um, but then back to Bonk Three, they went with the straight boss rush. So, but there is you always have to replay bosses in almost every Bonk game. The one thing that confuses me though is, and I couldn't find any rhyme or reason for this. Uh, what Bonk's doing the entire time when he's fighting Huey, Gladys, whatever, he's freeing them from the control of uh, Droll. How are they back under the control of Droll for the uh, boss rush? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm curious if there's some sort of, I don't know, maybe these are the clones? No? I might be just making something up on that one, but but I agree with you. How? What happened? What exactly went down in the course of a, you know, a stage? Okay, so if you're grinding for a world record in this game, you actually want to take your meat power up all the way to the first hit of this Gladys, and it's it's really tight. It is not like, you have to basically be perfect. You can't make you can't miss anything on the way over there. This this um oh gosh, what's the this dude's name? I totally forgot his name. But uh, he his hitbox is one of the most challenging in the entire game. I can't remember his name. Oh, jeez. Is it our fish buddy? Uh, this is Monkey Dude. Monkey Dude. Okay, fish buddy's next. Okay. So I'm trying to avoid getting hit. There's real. There's no power up way to beat this guy. You just have to uh, grind it out like you would if you were doing a casual playthrough. At least that we know of. There hasn't been anything new discovered. But I am going to get some meat for Punchy, uh, who is the last of the refights. And uh, it's one of those things you do stop in midair, so do a little bit of a claw grip to... Uh, oh, jeez. That was okay. We did lose meat, but you can't take meat to the next fight anyway. So we're about to see a new boss, which is pretty exciting. Um, this name of this boss is called t Raptor Head, and you'll see why in just a second here. The actual name is t Raptor. I'm not making any of these names up, I promise. Um, but it is our first appearance of... Oh, God, what do they call... Is it Fake Princess Zaw? Is that what they call... I don't even... I can't remember. Yeah, false princess, fake princess. You'd think there's after running this game... I'm yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, John. There's a, there's a couple of translations. You'd think after running this game a couple hundred times, you would actually remember the name of some of these things, but 
If you get to know me at all, you realize that when I'm speedrunning, for some reason, proper names, just I cannot remember in my head. Well, that would also require you oh, to get go. to the good credits. Fight. Right, exactly. Yes, <laughs> I have to watch the credits. That was actually a really good fight. So what happened there is I got hit and... The way that the damage boosting works, it can throw you in one direction or the other. It actually throws you into the hitbox while you're spinning on T-Ractor Head, whose hitbox is like the size of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a green pea. It, it's it's stinking tiny. And especially casually, that one can really uh, wreak some havoc on you. Help me get to Moonland. That is the actual Princess Zah. And we're going to follow her to Moonland to go hopefully beat up some drool and... Uh, you know, save the world for everyone. Uh, flashing lights again, folks. If you are sensitive to flashing lights, now is the time to look away. I'll let you know in just a second when we get them back. Another staple of the 8 and 16 bit era flashing lights. <laughs> Did they not yeah. know about photosensitivity back then? I'm just, I don't even get it. <laughs> okay, uh, there's going to be another flashing light, so just beware. We are taking the spaceship up to go face the evil King Drool. Although the stars have smiley faces on them, so how evil can Drool be? I don't even know. Anyway. Okay, one I more know. flashing I think we lighter. need a full origin story uh, game. For real. So okay, you can look Konami back now. to sell the rights real quick to Nintendo. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, I got a good first cycle. We're going to see two different versions of Drool here. The first one is this outline of the yellow. Okay, and if we do everything right, it should only take three cycles. Oh, geez. Okay, there we go. Now we're on to the second cycle. And we're going to take some damage as we try to get on top of Drool. Ah, oh, missed. Okay. This Drool fight can be really tough if you've never played it before. The only way that I'm aware that you can actually do some damage on Drool here is if you get hit. <laughs> like, do real damage. And as a casual playthrough, that can be really frustrating. Oh, jeez. Okay, so we got stuck in a little bit of a... There we go. Same thing here. We'll take damage again. Get on top of him. Oh, time! That is time! Sorry! So, I'm, I sincerely apologize. Sorry, Rika. Oh, no, I forgot to tell him. It's time! I should have given him a heads up. My apologies. <laughs> and, folks, that is uh, some Bonk's adventure. One of the fun things about all of the games in the series is that they have some really fun uh, you know, credits and title and cutscenes at the end. This is Princess Za. You've replaced her crown. You've actually brought Moonland back together. And apparently love is in the air. It kind of feels like they shoehorned a love story into this somehow, but apparently they did. And one of the great things about this is they do go through the credits and they give you all of the names of the characters and the developers and all that kind of stuff. This is Huey and some others. Sean, any final thoughts as we wrap this thing up? Um, I'm really <laughs> thinking to myself right now if I if we think we should start a petition to get uh, Konami to sell the rights of Bonk to Nintendo or to literally anybody that would be willing to play make the game. Okay, so for the thousands of you that are out there, if you at all are interested in this game, maybe we should start a letter writing campaign. We'll do it old school, just like it like it was back in the eighties and nineties. We'll start a letter campaign to figure <laughs> to get an origin story book. Yeah, um, stick all the letters on the pachinko machines. Absolutely, of, uh, Konami. Just one quick shout out. If you're all at all interested in the TurboGrafx-16, we have a wonderful Discord community that uh, it's not just speedrunning. People who enjoy it casually, we talk the hardware, we talk the games. It's a really friendly place. Feel free to join us. It's on many of the SRC and many of the speedrun.com leaderboards. If you just click on the Discord, you can come hang out, ask any questions, join in and join us because we actually have a leaderboard for this game now. It's not just DK28 doing some damage. There's like almost 10, I think there's over 10 people actually. So um, I just want to do a quick thank you to ES say thank you so much for allowing like a turbo graphic 16 game <laughs> i know it's a, it's a small niche art uh, audience but i really do appreciate the opportunity and also uh thanks so much for all of you that have donated and are making uh this charity marathon really happen esa is a wonderful uh, event and save the children is a wonderful charity that we should all support so thank you so much for the opportunities hope you all have a good rest of your day morning night and i will see you all later thank you so much for having me follow lot mackie Always forget that. <laughs> and don't go anywhere because we will be continuing with Blaster Master up next as ESA Summer 21 continues. Have a great night because I too am signing out.